right, good morning everybody. Welcome to another round of Coffee and Questions. What's today's topic? We're going to talk about using a lathe and some lathe turning and having some fun today. The gardener dropped me off this piece of mesquite wood and so I'm going to get it ready here before it starts to crack and becomes unusable and uh, turns into firewood and see if we can make something out of it. So this is just the log and I've got it cut and right here in the middle I'm going to use a Forstner bit, one inch in diameter and I'm going to drill down probably about a half an inch and that's going to enable me to use my spur on the lathe um, and I'll show you here in a minute to mount it up so that when it spins I can turn it and then I'm going to use some very inexpensive tools. I had a, a set of Harbor Freight bull gouges or bull gouge set I got long ago and didn't really have a whole lot of use for them because I have better quality tools but what I like using the spindle gouge for which is the bigger one is to knock off all this bark and if it damages the edge I can sharpen it up real quick on my grinder and you know I can abuse it let's say okay before I get into you know the higher quality tools anyway let me get this drilled I'll get it up on the lathe I'll show it to you and let's have some fun here we go Okay, so I went ahead and I mounted it between that spur drive and the tailstock. And now I'm going to use this Harbor Freight roughing gouge. I'm just going to go ahead and trim the bark off and see what things look like. So I'll let the video roll for a few minutes and I'll show you what I'm doing. Okay, so here's where the fun part comes in. I've got it all cleaned up. I've got it looking like a cylinder. I've got a tenon on the back and the front, and that way I can mount it either way. Now, what I was thinking about doing is I'm going to make a vessel out of this, but I want to have a lid on it too. So I'll probably take part of this and cut it and get rid of it and mount the other half and make the vessel. Then I'll come back and mount this in a little while and then I'll make the top for it that sits on it. Now this has got a knot right here. A big brown patch running right there. That looks pretty good. There's a shorter one. And so now you can look at this and decide, well, what do you think you want the top and the bottom to be? Well, I think I'm going to make where this knot is, I'm going to make this part the vessel itself. I'll save part of this up here. Like I said, I'll show you in a minute what I'm going to do and take this off. And then that way, this becomes a vessel. I'll have enough for the lid. It's the same wood. And when we finish it, it should look nice. I mean, one on top of the other. So, you know, the usual thing, like when everybody talks about doing this stuff, is, you know, the top of the vessel where it's coming up like this, this part up here is like one third, and then the rest of the vessel is two thirds. I like having fun. I just eyeball things. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut part of this off that we set to the side for the lid. I'll mount this, then we'll look at it and we'll decide on that one-third, two-third part of it. Now what I do to start off with is I get some kind of a parting tool and I figure I take a look at this and I have the tenon already but I want enough of this to make some kind of a lid. So maybe in here and if it's mounted I can make like a short stubby lid or I can come back more but I think right here, this is pretty good. So what I do is just turn the lathe on slow. There's my mark. I spin it around. Yeah, that would look pretty good because the lid then will match up here. Match up here and here. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. So uh, I'll go ahead 
and what I do is I part this all the way down and then the last little bit I use a hacksaw cut it off so I'll be back with you here in just a sec before I get ready to take it all the way off so with the parting tool I start to advance it but what I do is I advance it a little bit and I take just a little sliver more that way it gives me a little wiggle room in here so Now I can see down in there and I've still got quite a ways to go, but when the kids in the neighborhood, when they come to do a lot of this stuff, I make them always keep this fence down, just as a safety precaution. Yeah, maybe you should too. Anyway. Okay, so you can see I went ahead and put my chuck on here. Got the screwdriver in here because I always like to lock it and give it a little cinching. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mount the part of the vessel, the, bit, the large part, not the lid. And we're going to start shaping it. So give me just a sec. Okay, so I put it here in the jaws. I've got my larger Allen wrench. Now before I tighten everything up, I like to kind of just spin it slowly. And it's pretty balanced. So I got it pretty much on center. So now I'm going to go ahead. And I'm going to tighten this up. Okay, so I got it mounted in the chuck. So there's two mounting points that I use this big Tex he bar on, and I tighten up these jaws. There's one, there's two, and I do check it periodically through the turning. But I got it mounted here, and that's running pretty true round. It's not perfect, but we're going to go ahead. We're going to make it nice, true, and round. Okay, so I got the tool rest on here. Now you'll see. It's got a little wobble to it, not much. But we can get rid of that. That's what the lathe's for here. We got everything good and tightened up, and I always check them as I go through the turning process. But you can actually, what I do now, I'll go ahead, kind of true this up. Okay, so now we got it running. That yeah, skates a little bit. Okay, it's running pretty true. Now, what you can do is where the fun begins, you begin to decide where you're going to curve the top in and how you're going to do the bottom. So. You can use a pencil, marker, I mean kind of, you know, anything that you want really. But, I, like I said, it's usually one-third, that's what's going towards the opening, two-thirds towards the bottom. That's what a lot of people do. I just guess, like I said, we're just kind of having a good time. I take a look at the wood, thing all right here, right there. So, you know, maybe we'll start curving it in eh, about right here. Now, I always take part of this down here, kind of create the bottom. I might make this a little higher. We're going to wait and see how that goes. I get the bottom. And now I, now I go ahead and I start making. Okay, now I'm going to make this come in like this, and then this will shape out. You can start wherever you want. You're just having fun. So you're getting the idea. We're going to turn around and shape that in. I was using a carbide tool, but now you can go back to using a gouge. You know, whatever you feel like. I always turn the tool rest in some. Kind of like that, because it gives you that marker on... Okay, so you can see I got the shape on here, and I didn't have a lot of time today, so I went ahead and I shaped it, rough shaped it. I haven't sanded it or anything yet. And then I used my hollowing rig right here. It's got a little infrared light right here, and it shows me where the cutting tool tip is. And I hollowed this out. It's about an eighth of an inch in thickness. 
all the way down to right about here and I saved a little bit of room here because I'll probably taper this and play around you know at the very bottom of it so I left it like that now I have to stop for the day so what I did is I got a container right here and I got one of these at the dollar store and we used up the spick and span or whatever it was and I filled it with mineral spirits now what I do to slow the, the drying time down and it works for me because I'm going to push this back into my garage where it's shaded but I squirt quite a bit of that mineral spirits on the inside and I coat the outside and I let it spin on the lathe now I have a blow gun and I blow this around in there and I kind of blow it and try to blow it into the pores of the wood but I soak this until it remains damp just like it is okay and then here's what I do next get a bag from the grocery store just like this now I'll probably come back and check on this tonight or in the morning if I can't do anything more in the morning and make sure it's still a little on the damp side and this will prevent the cracking and I'll show you in an upcoming video that this should stay pretty intact I shouldn't have any problems with it but that's what I do up to this point and uh, I don't know if I'll do all this in one video or two and so the next step after this is going to be sanding and getting this ready for a finish and I usually I'll go through my grits I start whether it's 80 or 120 most of the time I start around 120 my tools are pretty sharp and then the last tool that I use before I start my sanding is a carbide tool and it's super sharp so about 120 but if you got to start at 80 that's fine go to 120 150 go to 220 after that from 220 to 320 to 400 then if you want to keep going you can go 500 600 800 a thousand and I don't take too big of a jump between grits because each time you sand you want to get out the previous grits marks so in between each sanding, I mean, I clean it and blow it off real good, and then I start with the next grit. And I keep doing that, and you'll get a more outstanding finish if you just take your time in the preparation process.